Hey everyone, Unmar here. Today we're going to be looking at the basics of lighting in Maya using V-Ray. So I'm going to be looking at how to use the basic V-Ray lights like the V-Ray rectangle light, the sphere light, and mesh light to create something that looks uh, fairly appealing, right? And that has a lot of visual interest. As you can see here on the left, this is just using a V-Ray dome light, just a standard white background. Uh, there's everything just looks really flat, right? It looks very boring. You, you, your eye has no idea where to look and you almost kind of blend back into uh, the background, right? Compared to what we have here, uh, I'm using what's typically called the three point lighting setup. And, you know, I, I'm using a key light, rim light, and fill lights. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what you call it. Um, what, I tip, what I'm typically doing, what I am doing, is lighting with purpose, right? So I want to make sure that, you know, the dump pail back here has this nice highlight, so it's popping off the background a lot more. You can see the same thing where I, I can add some highlights to the grill and the bumper of the vehicle. We're getting highlights on the tires, uh, wheels, and uh, whatnot, the fuel canister, all of that, right? So I'm making sure that every light that I'm adding is adding to and improving the overall visual quality and fidelity. Uh, I am also using warm lights here on the right and cooler lights here on the left. So we're going to get into all of that today. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to jump in here to uh, Maya. And as you can see, all I have is the truck model, a ground plane uh, here. So if I jump to perspective, you can kind of see and uh, a render camera. Now the render camera does not have a V-Ray physical camera. I am not using any exposure settings, any camera, physical camera settings uh, or anything like that. So just focusing strictly on the lighting here. Uh, all that will come later. Uh, and you know, I'll look into things like dome light, image-based lighting, uh, HDRs uh, and all that good stuff. So uh, what I want to do now uh, is quickly just go over my render settings. I'm just doing half 10 uh, by 40 uh, using progressive Reinhardt for the color mapping, which is all default and GI with low irradiance map settings and lower light cache settings. All right. So now that we got all that out the way, we can go ahead and just begin creating lights. So, uh, what I will do here is enable the uh, viewport IPR. Now keep in mind it does not use the frame padding or anything like that. Uh, and obviously it's black because we have no lights. So I will begin by creating a light. Now, if you wanted to create uh, a light, a standard V-Ray rectangle light, you can use that here, or you can go up to create lights uh, V-Ray. All the lights are, are here. Uh, I will be using the the shelf here. It's just got all the tools that we need and uh, makes my workflow and your workflow a lot faster. So I'll go ahead and create a V-Ray rectangle light and begin by uh, positioning that. So I will go ahead and move that here and we can see uh, what we have so far. Now, this is as the name uh, states a rectangle light, right? So I will begin by making this much larger. I'll do 20 by 20. All right. Uh, now the thing with V-Ray or with these lights, uh, especially using the default units, is that as you increase the size of the light, it is going to increase the intensity of the light. Uh, you see the units just say default. Uh, this is a mu multiplier, right? So I can switch to more real world settings like lumens here. Now lumens, you can see that it just jumps up to about 7,500. One lumen to put in perspective is one, has enough brightness as one candle, which is why this is about 7,500. This is a very, very bright light, right? So if we start toning that down to something, you know, you can see that it, it, it gets a lot dimmer. Uh, the other one I typically use if I'm doing real world uh, arc, arc this stuff is watts. Um, watts. Now this is not the, you don't want to type in 100 watts here for a 100 watt light bulb. A uh, 100 watt light bulb will typically actually use uh, about two to three watts, right? So this is the size, this size of this rectangle, uh, rectangle light at about two or three watt intensity will give us a, a bit more accurate lighting. 
to put things in perspective as well, I do have the scale reference. This is about 47 uh, centimeters in depth. So it's about, you know, about 15 inches in depth and, you know, about, you know, eight, six to eight inches uh, in, in, in height. So uh, kind of a table, a larger tabletop model that'll be sitting there. Uh, and we're just going to continue uh, lighting from there. So now that I have that, I'll hit control A to jump back to my attribute editor. You can see, I'll just go ahead and work with default units today. So we're just kind of going on the theory of uh, lighting. Uh, I'll start with just an intensity multiplier of about 10. And that, that works there. All right. Now, what I am going to do is just kind of move this light here to the wall so we can kind of see a couple of things. All right. We have the shape type, which right now is a rectangle light. So if I move it here, you can kind of see it's a square rectangle. Uh, I can change this to disk. So you can see that it'll turn into a circular disk. Uh, so you can use that if you'd like. Uh, the other thing again is UV size. Don't I do not recommend scaling your lights. That will actually just throw off all of the calculations and 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 everything, and just throws off the real world value. So just make sure to stick with UV size here. So if we want to increase the length of this, is the U, and V size is height. All right. Now. Uh, one other cool feature here is directional. So if I increase this directional value, you can kind of start to see what happens here. Okay, you can start to see that now we're getting a more of a directional light. So instead, right, if I set this to zero, you can see that the light is emitting equally from all sides of the V-ray rectangle light. But if I start to add directional, you can see that now it's starting to focus it towards this direction. So uh, I typically use these for spotlight effects uh, and whatnot. I wouldn't crank it up to pure one. Um, it starts to behave a little bit funny, but you can start to see now if I wanted more of the spotlight effect, I can position it uh, here. And it just it also focuses all of the light rays towards the vehicle. So, you know instead of the light rays, essentially you can see here in the viewport spreading equally in all directions, it's focusing it like a flashlight at the vehicle, at the model. Okay, uh, for studio lighting, I mean, I use, if I use this at all, we'll use fairly low values like 0.2. So now we can start to see, we can start to set uh, this light up. So for the name naming convention, uh, I will just call this light our key or main light, right? So I'll just call it key light. The other thing to keep in mind when working with lighting is the size and direction of the light. So you can see that if I take this light now, move it up and position it in a way that, you know, it's uh, very high and we're gonna get some good, some, some nice ground shadows. Uh, for this example, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off directional. So I'll just set that to zero. And I'll go ahead and just position this more on top. If I have a very small light, right? So imagine if I had something like two by two, very small light, but it had a, a very high intensity, like 500. You start to see that with this very small light source, but very high intensity, I start to get very crisp and hard shadows. Now, sometimes this is what you want. Um, in this case, I'm going for much softer lighting, right? So if I want a lot of much softer lighting, I want to go for the complete opposite. So I'm going to go for a, so I'll bring the intensity down so it doesn't blind people. So I'll set the intensity to five, but now I'll set the UV size to something, you know, like 50 by 50. So something a lot larger. You typically find this in, you know, automotive lighting, uh, a big giant soft box for, for reflections and shadows. As Now, as you can see, we are getting nice, soft, more blurry shadows. That's because the light source is much larger, right? So keep that in mind with the size and intensity uh, are, you know, completely related. And depending on what you want, you can get uh, whatever result uh, you're looking for uh, when lighting a uh, product. So if I go ahead and create another uh, V-Ray light, so I can experiment with other types of lights. You can see we have a sphere light, 
So if I go ahead and create that, you can see it's exactly as the name applies, a sphere light. Uh, what I like to do a lot also is use the V-Ray Light Lister. So I'll enable that or turn that on. And you can see now uh, I can disable and turn on lights very easily uh, using this V-Ray Light Lister. Okay, now that should be under V-Ray, create V-Ray and then Light Lister. Or again, you can just use this little light bulb icon. All right. So if I want this light here, you can see I can increase the radius, so make it much larger. You can, if if it's a large light, increase the sphere segment. So it'll just make it kind of a smoother light. Uh, I haven't had to go like higher than maybe 32 or something like that. Um, and you can see what starts to happen as I increase the radius, and then of course increasing the multiplier. All right. So you can get some cool effects using that. Uh, I'll go ahead and just delete that. The other light I, I, I quickly want to cover is a uh, mesh light. So that means you can take any mesh, any 3D model inside of Maya and make it a light. So in this case, I'll make this kind of a larger radius, increase the section radius, and I'll give it, you know, maybe like 36. Oh, we'll give it that 24. And I'll just go ahead and make this a mesh light. So I can kind of move it around here. So uh, to do that, you use this icon here, right uh, and left click or right click to assign properties. I'll just go ahead and just make this a uh, light. So you can see uh, immediately turns into a light and all the same V-Ray settings that we would gone over for the sphere light and the rectangle light apply here. We have uh, intensity multiplier, the units, and of course, temperature, uh, which we'll get into uh, a little bit later. All right, so you can use that uh, if you want to experiment with some things. I'm just, for the sake of this demo, going to continue to use just a V-Ray rectangle light. So I will go ahead and create another light here. Uh, this time, I want this to essentially be what's called our fill light, right? So if I open up my light lister again and turn on my key light, we can kind of see what's going on here. So we have our fill light here, and I can kind of move and position this uh, out here. And then as I'm, of course, want to increase the size of this, uh, keep in mind your fill light typically is just is gonna just again fill in the dark areas. It is not going to be the same intensity as your key light. So our key light, you can see our intensity is about 10. Our fill light is just going to fill in more of these darker areas. So I'll go ahead and uh, enable that again and set this to maybe about five, so you can see what it's doing here. And what I like to do as I'm lighting is turn off the main light and kind of just see how these new lights I'm creating are affecting uh, our model, All right? So now we're getting some nice highlights here. Uh, now this is kind of just a square light. I can, of course, increase the, I believe, the U size to something like 10. So now we get something a little bit more rectangular. I'm going to angle it down so we get, you know, allude to that coming. Uh, that source of light coming kind of from the front left here. And we can move it back. The closer, obviously, this light is, uh, the you know less the light is going to decay, the less light fall off there's going to be. All right. Now, you may have saw that the light is actually visible here. Well, under the options, you can set this to be invisible. So it'll emit a light source but it won't actually show you the, the light itself, which is kind of nice. So I don't have to worry if I push it in uh, to the camera a bit and I get a really good lighting, I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Well, you can just hide it and not have to worry about it uh, clipping there. Okay, so again, this fill light now is helping kind of balance the lighting. And I'm gonna go ahead and add another light. Uh, 
So if I go ahead and just create another rectangle light, and we can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, this time I want to make sure to kind of use this for uh, accent or rim lighting. So I'll go ahead and increase the size again, 10 by, um, you know, yeah, we'll maybe do 15 by, by 10. Okay. And what I want to do here is this is going to be a low intensity light for sure, maybe even like four. And then what this is going to do is you can see, and now if you're adding more lights with the light lister open, just hit refresh. And I can call this uh, rim light or accent light, whatever you want to call it, right? So you can see now I have that. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of move that back a little bit. And you can kind of see what it's doing there. And I'm going to give this a little bit. See how the light's spreading a bit too much? This is a good time to use directional just a little bit. So focus is the light towards the vehicle. So that'll kind of work out uh, well in my favor. And I'll just go ahead and kind of angle it again uh, there. Okay. So I will rotate this down, get a little bit more interesting. So kind of a higher view. Now what I'm going, what I'm getting here is you can see I'm starting to get this accent lighting, this rim lighting across the front grille uh, here. So if I go ahead and turn that on and off, you can see exactly what it's doing. We're getting these really nice uh, details coming off of the vehicle, right? Which is giving us things like more readability, more visual interest, more emphasis, right? So I just turned on the IPR, so you can kind of see that here a little bit more in a more fo focused view. Let me turn off uh, history here, just so you can kind I can get more real estate. All right, so I want this to be now on the actual camera. This was good for initially setting up the lighting, but with the camera that I have, uh, it doesn't take into account the resolution and you know the frame, safe frames, frame padding, all that stuff. So I'll go ahead and enable that. So now you can see, again, it's a subtle effect, but we're now getting highlights here. So turning it off and turning it on again. And now with the key light and everything that we have here, it's all starting to come uh, together. Obviously, with the key light, things are a bit bright, which is fine. Um, and if I wanted to, right, things are a little, still a little bit flat here. I can add another rim light uh, on the other side of the vehicle. So. I'll go ahead, control D to duplicate that. And let me go ahead and just move this over to a world transform. And I will go ahead. I can do that here in the tool settings here. Let me just bring it over here. If you wanted to just use world, rotate this. So it doesn't mess with the transforms or the orientation, I should say. So now with this light, I'm getting these this nice, again, rim lighting that's coming off of this vehicle here, uh, off of the lip of the the dump the this part of the dump truck, as you can see where my mouse cursor is. So I can maybe bring that up a little bit higher, rotate that down a little bit, and that starts to look pretty good. So if I refresh my light lister, uh, we have rim light one, rim light two. And we're getting, again, uh, some nice accent lighting coming off. We're getting more highlights coming off of the tire tread, which is great. And then we're getting most of the brightness kind of hitting initially from where our key light is coming from. All right. So I'll go ahead and kind of disable these each off one by one with IPR. And so no lights. Uh, I'll actually start with the rim light too. So you can see we're starting to get that here on the front uh, grill. And it's really helping give us some nice highlights uh, at the front of the, the dump truck. Okay. Rim light one. 
you can see now I'm starting to get this really nice highlight here along the rim of the truck. I'm getting highlights along the wheel tread and this nice one across the this capsule here. And then here's my, oh, let me jump to fill light. Fill light's just kind of giving us some good balanced lighting, filling in the darker spots. Because without the fill light, things will be probably just a little bit too dark. Uh, we can, of course, add in, see how it looks like without it. Uh, it looks okay, uh, but you can see that, it, again, if this is what you want, a little bit more contrast between like the passenger side of the vehicle and the driver's side, you know, we can get some interesting things. But with that, we'll more evenly light this thing. I'm actually going to probably tone this down even more because uh, I didn't want it too bright. I did like a little bit of that contrast coming back here. All right. So, so yeah, I mean, that's the gist of at least kind of setting these lights up. And if you want to, we can experiment with color temperature, right? So on this key light here, if you wanted something that's a little bit warmer, uh, you can drop the temperature warmer as in kind of red, orange, red, orange, yellow. You certainly can drop it to about 5200, something like that. So it's just, you know, going to tint it just enough. Uh, so, and then if we wanted to contrast that, we can make our fill light uh, to be cooler. So I can increase the temperature of the light. So now you can start to see at about, you know, 8,000 temperature, so if it's using Calvin, uh, we're starting to get kind of the blue on this side and then orange on the, the, the front of the truck, which is going to give you quite a bit more visual interest. So you certainly can play around with that and, you know, just, just, just have some fun, do some interesting things. But that in a nutshell, right, if I go ahead and stop this, open up my history, right, and then, yeah, look at the original light here very flat. We have this studio light here, which we have some good contrast. Things are popping off. And then we have now the lighting from this one, which is a little bit less intense, uh, more warmth and coolness coming in. Uh, so it's it's all up in, in, entirely up to you, right, on how you, you, you light this thing. But just keep in mind the key fundamentals that I'm talking about, you know, the directional, the direction of the lights, um, and you know the size of the lights, the temperature of the lights, and you know all of that coming together so we can get a nice, well lit uh, vehicle model uh, at the end. Okay, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, I'm going to continue to look into doing more, uh, focusing on lighting in my and V-Ray. So uh, hopefully you guys uh, will enjoy those. Thanks. Take care.